Let's now look at our different numerical descriptors. The first measure that we will look into is the measure of central tendency or the measure of center. So the measures of central tendency or the measures of center are considered to be the most common set of measures in statistics. They reduce sample values into one value that best represents their center. One phrase that is associated with the measures of central tendency or measures of center is the phrase typical performance. Performance. The measures of central tendency tends to give the typical performance of our data set, which is related to the phrase it's the one that best represents their center. So whatever the center of the data set is, that is what the typical performance of the data set would be. Another word that is related to the measure of central tendency is the word average. Although it might be more related to one measure, usually the word average itself can also be related to the to all, rather, all measures of central tendency. And we have three measures of central tendency. We have the mean, the median, and the mode. So, first measure of central tendency that we we'll look into is the mean. The mean of a data set is found by adding up all the items and then dividing by the sum of the number of items. The mean of a sample is denoted by the symbol X bar, while well, the mean of a complete population is denoted by mu. The definition that was given, this one in the this one in the first part, actually tells us also the formula for finding the mean. Usually, when we see it in books, the formula for mean, which is usually uh, x bar, would be the summation, that symbol, that symbol is for the sum, summation or the sum, the sum of all items, that symbolize it by x, over the number of items usually symbolized by small letter n. That formula that you see there is usually the formula that is associated with the mean. Going back to our Excel file of the different descriptors that we had a while ago, we can see that the mean shot of time is this one, 8.6. So, we will get this data, 8.6. That would mean that the mean of the data set that you're seeing right now is 8.6. Take note that in the slide, you see the word arithmetic beside the word mean. The usual statistical definition of mean is what is shown to us a while ago and that actually is, uh, to more accurately describe it, is called the arithmetic mean. In other branches of mathematics, there are other different kinds of means called the geometric mean and the harmonic mean. But for statistics, we will focus on this mean called the arithmetic mean. To interpret the mean, we have this generic template that we can use. So, on average, the sample units have a value of which, whichever the mean is. Applying it on our running example, on average, the phones shut off after 8.6 seconds. So looking at this interpretation, it gives us a general idea that even though we do not know exactly what are the power of time of the 25 phones each, at least we have an idea that on the average, it would be 8.6. And the word on average will give us probably more or less time that the values will be at least closer to 8. Take note that a set of data has a unique mean and the mean is affected by unusually large or unusually small data values that we call outliers. Take a look at this illustration. The mean of 5 numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, is 5. If we remove 1 there, the mean would be 6. If we return 1, the mean goes back to 5. If we remove 9, 
the mean becomes 4. If we return 9, the mean becomes 5. If we remove 3, the mean becomes 5.5. And this nature of the mean being affected by extreme scores or outliers does have its advantages and disadvantages. Consider the following data for shipments of peanuts from a hypothetical use exporter to five Canadian cities. As you can see in the illustration, the mean that we got is 127.4. Because if we're going to add 15, 45, 64, 228, and 285 and divide it by 5, we will get 127.4. The mean tells us that if we're going to get these values and somehow make it into a spot where in everything is considered, that spot, that center, is 127.4. It considers all the five data values. However, take a look at that illustration of the seesaw. Actually, this is one strength and weakness of the mean. If you want your measure of central tendency to consider all your data, then you are well off with the mean. However, on that specific illustration, as you can see, more of the data is actually on the smaller side, 15, 45, 64. However, due to the nature of these two very large values, they need to meet at this point of 127.4. So that is one weakness of the mean. It might not actually a representative of the entire picture because it is affected by extreme scores or what we call outliers. Every set of interval level or ratio level data has a mean. How about nominal, ordinal data? Let's take a look. Here, in the nominal data set, we only have 1, 2, 3 assigned to different nationalities. Can we find the data for this? Let us see if your answer is correct. The answer is no. Because it doesn't make sense if we find the average and its nationality. How about in ordinal data? Football poll, first, second, third. Does it make sense to find the mean? The answer is also no. It does not make sense because these are just orders and ranks. However, in interval data and in ratio data, it is important that we find our mean it makes sense rather that we find our mean so we have to take note of mean strength and mean weakness of the mean which is being influenced by outliers and take note that mean can only be computed for interval and ratio data levels of variables in the next video we're going to look on the other two measures of central tendency the median and the mode